Bill, as always, it's great to talk with you. Now, let's talk about North Korea. Some are comparing this to when Reagan walked away from the table at Reykjavik during nuclear negotiations with Gorbachev. Do you see this as a power move by President Trump to keep North Korea guessing, or perhaps out of necessity, due to the fact that Korea probably didn't destroy that nuclear reactor as promised? I think it is a power play, no doubt. Um, I think that uh, Secretary of State Pompeo told the president that North Korea really wasn't cooperating in the pre-run-up um, to the summit, that they weren't putting forth what they were willing to do. Uh, and Pompeo said, look, you know, it looks like a dog and pony show to enhance the power of uh, Kim Jong-un, little rocket man. So maybe we send him a message, and I think that's what happened. All right, well, let's talk about the NFL as well. I wanted to get your reaction to this new policy of the players who want to protest have to stay inside the locker room. Good move, bad move? Well, as you know, John, because I know you're glued to BillOReilly.com, I have said this for 18 months, that that was the solution, um, that the players who didn't want to honor the national anthem and the flag stay in the locker room until they're over, and then they can come out. That's the solution, so you don't offend Patriots who want the flag and the anthem to be honored. And I don't know what the uproar is over this. I said, in addition, if I were a club owner, I would give Tuesdays to the players to say whatever they wanted to the press. You want to badmouth America? Go ahead. On Tuesday, you can do it. So that we're not stifling your freedom of speech. We're just right. making the workplace more hospitable to the customers who don't like you besmirching the flag. And I think that makes perfect sense. And these players have millions of people following on their social media pages. It's not like they don't have an outlet to reach sure, the people who want to listen outlet. to this. You just don't do it in front of the paying customers who don't appreciate it. And it was affecting the bottom line of the league and the teams as well. All right, next topic, Bill, is a strange one, but we got to talk about the Boy Scouts. And we're hearing reports, I know you've been reporting on this, one of the first reports, that they're going to hand out condoms yeah. at the Boy Scout Jubilee. What is going on here? What's next? Cross-dressing? Is that what's next? I mean, come on. The politically correct forces are out of control. We all know that. The Boy Scouts have a jamboree in West Virginia. But it's not run by the Boy Scouts of America. It's run by some umbrella organization that's bringing in the Canadian Scouts and the Mexican Scouts, which is a good thing. You have all three Scouts there. They learn about each other. Okay. But it, in addition to that, they're going to go, oh, we're going to have condoms available. Oh, are they going to have wine coolers, too? I mean, come <laughs> on. It's just this politically correct madness, John. You know, the theme of BillOReilly.com is take your country back. This is a perfect example. But what the Boy Scouts of America do not realize is that they're over. They're done. Because the Boy Scouts are a traditional organization, and traditional Americans are not going to put their boys and girls in that organization knowing it's this permissive. They're just not going to do it. So I would imagine there's going to be a, a replacement organization or some new sure, organization that comes up. There's, there are a lot of them out there. They're yep. going to become more popular for sure. Yeah, Absolutely. and the churches are running their own now and uh, that kind of thing. But it's a shame. Isn't it a shame that the Boy Scouts, the venerable Boy Scouts of America, now are under the thumb of the politically correct zealots? What? Ah, oh, it just makes me angry. I know I only made it to Weeblo rank, but we never talked about a safe sex, sex merit badge, so things clearly changing. Last topic, and let's get back on uh, today's news, and that is this meeting taking place in Congress. There are a couple meetings, actually, one with just Devin Nunez and Trey Gowdy, but there's also a meeting of the Gang of Eight to talk about these informants or spies, your choice of word, that were involved in Mueller's investigation. Was it right to include the Democrats? Was that smart? Yeah, well, look. Um Donald Trump has made a very smart move telling the American public that he wants 100 percent transparency about the FBI investigation into him and Russia and Hillary Clinton in emails. That's very smart. Let the folks see it. Let the folks see what the evidence is. And if the Democrats want to be in this meeting, fine. Now, you know that Schiff, all right, is going to come out, the congressman from California, and say anything to hurt Donald right. Trump. You know that. But the Republicans can counter. But I think the important part of this story is that the president 
wants all the evidence out there. It doesn't sound like a guy who's guilty to me, and I'm not saying that with any ideology or party focus. But if you want all the evidence out there, good, let's see it. It does seem interesting, too, that Rudy Giuliani is now saying that he thinks the president should sit down. Trump is calling for transparency. This would indicate maybe that Trump feels like he's not going to be uh, put through the ringer in all of this. But does that mean now we, we can expect the investigation to run its course, that he's not going to fire either Mueller or even Rod Rosenstein? Look, the evidence is that the president of the United States is not going to be um, implicated. That's the right word in any direct yeah. Russian collusion deal. That's what the evidence is so far. If he sits with Mueller, he opens himself up, as you know, we've talked about it before, to right. a trap. He could say something because Trump shoots from the lip uh, that doesn't jive up with what happened a year and a half ago. And then you could say perjury or misleading. So you've got to be very, very careful. I don't, I'm not going to get involved in what he should and shouldn't do because I don't know the circumstances about what questions are uh, maybe asked or what the boundaries are. But it seems to me that Trump believes he's completely innocent, he wants the evidence out there, and maybe he goes in and he answers some questions and then he says, I don't remember. You don't remember, say you don't remember. And right. that's what, but whatever he does with Mueller, it's gonna be leaked. It's gonna be leaked very fast, and it's not gonna be leaked to the good of Donald Trump. So Giuliani right. and Trump's lawyers ought to know that. You sit down with Mueller, immediately going to be leaked, and it's not going to be good toward the president. All right, Bill, as always, we're looking forward to the podcast, and we'll see you next week. Take okay, care. Okay, John, thanks for having me in.